clouds, we'll see Jesus rise, meet him in the air. Stepping on the clouds, he will greet us. All the joy together we'll share. I'm going to leave this world behind me, going where the devil cannot find me. I'm going higher, higher, higher. Stepping on the clouds, one of these days, one of these days I'm going to leave. Stepping on the clouds, he will greet us. All the joy together we'll share. I'm gonna leave this world behind me. Go for the devil, cannot find me. I'm going higher, higher, higher. Stepping on the clouds, roll the smooth. The stars in the planet. I'm gonna walk. All right. I think we're ready. Put some batteries in the thing, and they weren't any good, I guess, so now we're ready to go. Good morning. Another beautiful morning in February, and let's see, uh, a boy and his mom are walking down the street, and the boy pulled his mom's arm and said, Mom, look, there's a bow-legged man over there. Mother shushed him quickly and said, it's nice, not nice to call people bow-legged. A week later, they're walking together, and he pulls his mom's arm again and says, Look, Mom, there's that bow-legged man again. This time, the mother takes him straight home and saying, I told you before, it's not nice to call people bow-legged. They arrived home, and the mother handed the boy a book by Shakespeare, saying, Go to your room and read this book. Hopefully, it'll teach you some manners. So the boy read the book. A week later, they're walking down the street, and the boy pulls his mom's arm and says, Hark, what manner of men are these? who wear their legs in parentheses. <laughs> oh, man. How many of you are this age? You know you're getting old when you walk past a bathroom and think, I might as well use this while I'm here. <laughs> yeah, sadly. I read this, I didn't know what to think about this. It said, okay, in Cain's defense, he didn't know what would happen if he hit Abel. No one had ever died before. You ever think about that? <laughs> wake up, wake up. <laughs> and that's interesting. You never realize what you have until it's gone. Toilet paper is a good example. <laughs> and... Uh, I finished three books yesterday, and believe you me, that's a lot of coloring. <laughs> you get it? You get it? All right. A man was injured today after being run over by a reversing car. Police are appealing for the driver to come forward. Mm -hmm. Define avoidable. Define avoidable. That's what a matador tries to do. Avoidable. There you go. You may call it being really bad at darts. I call it freestyle acupuncture. <laughs> Yikes. All right. Uh, let's, uh, who's up here? David's here. Anybody else over here? Judge Chuck, you want to grab this one? And uh, while they're getting ready, um, keep Carol Coleman in your prayers. Uh, some of you saw uh, they had found a spot a while back on Carol's lung that they've determined is cancer. They're doing some other tests of something they found in her stomach and uh, some other things. They're running tests on Carol. So uh, not a lot of answers right now, just still a lot of questions. So, uh, you know, she's dealing with that. She's doing okay. But uh, just limit, don't. don't let her know you love her, you pray for her, but if, if you know, six different people all ask her questions every time she comes, that, that, that's hard. And so just, just say, hey, we're praying for you. When we, as we get updates and we get information, we'll keep you up to date on uh, what's happening with Carol. But uh, keep her in your prayer, okay? And then, of course, we're praying for the Reed family. 
is there down in Florida for Tom's sisters and uh, there, of course, Bob's aunt. Uh, her service is today at noon, and so pray for the family there. And the nice wingers are improving, uh, not able to be here yet. And Diana came home from the hospital, uh, so they're home now, and uh, things are on the men's. So continue to pray for them. And uh, Rich Johns is still out this morning with sickness, so pray for Rich and uh, his mom Ruth is due to be released from the hospital today too. They don't have any answers still though uh, about her dizziness and such, so uh, keep her in prayer as well, and I know you appreciate that. All right, now let's hear from you. Right here, Debbie? Uh, yeah, an update on Larry, Steve's yes. brother. He had been doing better earlier in the week and had been off of oxygen since Tuesday, so on Friday they moved him out of the ICU into a regular room. But then on Saturday, yesterday, his oxygen level dropped to 11, and they couldn't wake him up. So they finally got him woke up. Obviously, he's back on oxygen again, and they had to move him back into ICU. Okay. So he's had a bit of a setback. So uh, just continued prayer for him. Absolutely. Keep praying for Larry Phillips. Very good. Somebody else? Down here in front? Good morning, everybody. Um, I just want to give a little bit of an update on my sister uh -huh. who's been very, very sick. She's partially verbal, um, but really what I'd be asking for in the prayer is that my brother-in-law is having a lot of difficulty with the insurance paying for her acute care. They keep putting obstacles in his way and obstacles in his way and obstacles in his way. Mm. So if you guys could just like maybe loosen that up if the Lord could, could loosen those wheels up somehow. Sure I'd appreciate will. it. Thanks. In addition, praying for health, pray for those medical issues. So, yes, Jan. Um, I got to see Megan yesterday for mm -hmm. the new ones. Megan is my step granddaughter, and she had been on drugs. She is now two years free. She has a court date tomorrow. Her parole officer is going to push for her to be released. So she doesn't have to report to him anymore. Okay. So prayers for her that the court will accept that and okay. let her be free. All right. Wonderful. Good. Thank you, Jan. Any other prayer requests or blessings you want to share? Bob? Uh, put me on your prayer list. Uh, I think it's Thursday I go in to see Dr. Fu. Uh, Wednesday I'll get a... Uh, test ran and then my battery started running low Friday went off on me in the in the morning and it goes off every every morning now at the same time but it's I'm sure it's still got some time left on it but I'll be it, within the next week or so I'll be going in and they'll be putting new batteries in my defibrillator so okay just be praying about that sure will brother Bob Amen. Jim? Pray for Sharon. She's uh, not very, very good. Sharon? Sharon, pray for her. What's wrong with Sharon? She just uh, not feeling good. Oh, okay. All right, sure. Sharon Talladay. All right, very good. Dave? Yeah, I just wanted to praise the Lord for my salvation. And uh, I was talking to James Beach their grandson and he sounds like he's half dead so he's doing pretty bad i was gonna gonna talk to him and invite him out to eat but he sounded like he wasn't gonna be eating nothing or he was getting up or at all yeah. so remember to pray for him and sure um just pray for the things that me and jerry are we're looking for a home and we're trying to get things straightened around and and uh got a granddaughter down there just pray for her salvation and hopefully okay. uh things will get better and we just thank the Lord for what we have now. Amen. Amen. Good. Yeah, Melissa? Um, my best friend, Catherine, and um, she just lost her dad this past week. Mm. So if you could pray for the Farley family. Yeah. Um, That's Catherine? Of, yes. What was the last name? Uh, her father's name is Farley. Her, her last name is Love. Okay. But her father passed away. Her and dad the lost her later. dad this week. Yeah. Wow. And the funeral's later this week. Okay. Yeah, he was a missionary. He did the um, reenactments a lot. Oh. So. 
Okay. So they Wonderful. have a whole community. All right. So we know he's with the Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. Anyone else? We good? Right here. Destin. Yeah, so uh, I've been down for these past couple of weeks, but thank God for his word. It's, it's been life to me, and thank God for this correction. You know, I was reading the word, Jeremiah is talking about the imagination, how evil it is, and the devil put just thoughts in my head, like, oh. Mm-hmm. And I thank God for him teaching me to cast it out, cast down the imagination, keep my mind Amen. stayed on him for peace. I just want to thank God, the authority he give us, just for the healing power he can give us through his word. I just want to just thank God for his word. It's just great. Amen. Yeah. Amen, yeah. Dustin. Hallelujah. Brother Nate. Yeah, I just want to give God praise for his goodness. Uh, went to jail on prison on Thursday, and it was a good turnout. There was, yeah. a, there was actually a guy in there that got saved when I went in there and preached. He has a date written down, and, man, he had a powerful testimony. And the men are there um, that have been coming. You can see the change in them. And their testimonies that they're given is encouraging other people. And, you know, the Holy Ghost just settled down upon the service. And, you know, I just praise God for the changed life, for the power that he gives us through him to be able to conquer whatever he wants us to accomplish Amen. through his word, through people. There's always witnessing opportunities that you'll never know. I mean, I always on purpose when I have customers and stuff will say, oh, praise God or thank the Lord. And you never know. It just opens up doors to be able to preach where you think you're working on a furnace but you're really witnessing. And so yeah. I praise God yeah. for his goodness, what he means to me, and the power that he can give us through him if we would just give him everything Amen. and we would walk in victory in him. So praise his name. Amen. That's good. Thank you, Nate. All right. Does that do it? Okay. Thank you, man. Appreciate your help this morning. We'll go to prayer, and then we'll go into our lesson today, another apostle here of Jesus Christ. All right. Let's pray together, shall we? Father, we bow before you now this morning. We thank you for another Lord's Day that you've given to us. And Lord, many, many requests mentioned here this morning. And certainly, we're a needy people. And we're so grateful uh, that you're the God who hears and answers prayer. That we can cast all of our care upon you because you care for us. And Lord, we lift up those with physical needs. uh, Some undergoing tests like Carol and and Brother Bob this week. And... um, uh, Lord, we're, we're, I think Rich is mom, and uh, Lord, I pray you'll give them wisdom to find out what's wrong with her. We pray for Larry in the hospital, Lord, that you'll touch him physically and spiritually. And Lord, do a work uh, not only on his body, but on his heart as well. Lord, we uh, just ask you to be with Joyce's sister and her husband, and you know the situation there. And Lord, we're asking you to do what only you can do in those situations. And uh, show yourself strong on their behalf and lord that the goodness of god towards them would lead them to repentance and father we're uh, praying you'll be with the nice wingers and you'll, you'll continue to heal them and uh, bring them back to us very very soon uh, we pray for melissa's friend Catherine, who lost her daddy this week and the lord just graduated him to heaven and lord while we're happy for him and precious in the sight of the lord is the death of his saints it's it's hard for us to say goodbye oftentimes to our loved ones, Lord, and I pray you'll give grace and strength to the family as with the Reed family to as well today as they say goodbye to, uh, Tom says goodbye to his sister and others to an aunt and whom they were close to. Lord, I pray that they'll remember the, the wonderful memories they have of her and her testimony for Christ and that you'll bless in that service this afternoon and that Christ will be exalted and lifted up. Lord, we... Uh, ask you now that you would meet with us today, that you would open our eyes so we could wondrous things out of your law. Uh, Lord, we love you today. Thank you for all you do for us. And Lord, we want to hear from you this morning. So bless our class, the other classes as they meet throughout the building. Bless our Spanish church today. I'll be with Pastor Vilas as he opens up the word of God. And I pray you'll give them a wonderful service today. And he come into our services today, Lord, without knowing Jesus Christ, I pray that they'd be drawn to the Savior this morning and trust Him as their Savior. So, Father, guide and direct now in our study. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, go to John chapter 12. We'll get there eventually where we get the least favorite of all the apostles, and it's Judas Iscariot, all right? Um, He's in the worst way possible. He's become the worst or the most well-known name maybe of the apostles. Uh, 
You don't, his name is synonymous with betrayal and disloyalty and dishonesty. Uh, you want to call somebody the lowest name you can, you can call him a Judas. Uh, that's just uh, as low as you can get. And uh, there's many lessons we're going to learn, though, from Judas Iscariot, all right? Let's fill your paper out, and we'll come up to John chapter 12, okay? Number one, he was given the name Iscariot. And that was from, he was from a place called Kerioth, a little town in southern Judah. It would be like, you know, Brother Bob from West Virginia, okay? Or, you know, so-and-so from, or, you know, Mary Lou from New Jersey. Uh, that uh, was Judas from Iscariot, okay? And uh, he was the only apostle not from Galilee. All the others were from Galilee, south in Judah, was Judas Iscariot. Now, consequently, Judas could have been more of a lonely figure. He could have definitely felt like an outsider. Uh, we mentioned last week about Matthew, was it last week or two weeks ago, about Matthew, how Matthew grew up in Nazareth. So he may have known Jesus. Now, this is not that big of a place. And he might have had been acquainted, at least knew who Jesus was, uh, just growing up. A lot of these men, you know, Peter and uh, uh, Andrew, James and John, they knew one another before they became apostles. And so you have this group that, that many of them knew each other, but not Judas. He was kind of the outsider. Maybe, maybe that's why they named him treasurer, you know what I mean? Because they knew each other too well. They, you know, I'm not letting that guy handle the money, you know, let, let this guy, we don't know him. And uh, so he, he kind of maybe been a little bit of an outsider. So number two, that, that's the second thing. He was the treasurer of the apostles. And that's what we read here in, in John chapter 12. The Bible says, and this is, a, this is a, something we'll talk about in just a little bit, about this uh, anointing. Mary, <clears throat> in verse number three, Mary took a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? And this he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief. And he had the bag and bear what was put therein. He had the bag means he was the treasurer of the group. He cared for the finances of the group. Now, granted, there weren't a lot of finances for the group, okay? The member of the Son of Man had no place to lay his head. Uh, but whatever they got, whatever they, they took in, he was in charge of that. And uh, it, it could have been he was following Jesus to try to gain some monetary advantage. Uh, maybe that was his goal. Uh, by the way, there are those today who follow Jesus. Sadly, there's some today who preach Jesus for monetary advantage. Uh, guys who end up with jets and multiple million dollar homes in different places of the country, they're, they're in it for, for money. And uh, sadly, they, they use it to their advantage. Uh, that hasn't changed. But I do believe this, that being treasurer meant at least they, they, that he was trusted. He was a trusted guy. They, they believed he would handle their money. However, being a trusted person doesn't save you. Being an honest person doesn't save you. Being a good person doesn't save you. Being a board member doesn't save you. Being a deacon doesn't save you. Being a Sunday school teacher doesn't save you. Being a pastor doesn't save you. Nothing that, no, no position you hold in a church or in life will save you. You're only saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior. And that's the only way you're saved. And so uh, I know sometimes we... We refer to people who maybe we, we know they're not Christians, but we say, ah, oh, but they're, they're, a good, they're a good person. And in and, and reality, biblically, that's not true. There's none that doeth good, no, not one. I know what we mean by that. I'm not chastising you when we say things like that, but we have to be careful that we don't kind of convince ourselves, well, I think they're okay. Well, they're not okay if they don't know Christ. 
And here's a good example of that. Uh, Judas would be one of those. Now, he tried to cover it, number three. He tried to cover it, but his true character came out. So he's trying to cover it until Mary takes this very costly ointment. Uh, most, most believe this ointment would have been about one year's salary. Think about what you make in one year. And then say, okay, I'm going to spend that and give it all to Jesus. I'm just going to give it to him. Now, he saw that and he called it, what did he call it? A waste. He said, why was this waste made? Uh, why wasn't this given to the poor? And, and listen, nothing, nothing you ever do for Jesus Christ is a waste. Make sure we understand that. Uh, that's, that, that's never the case. What was going on? The true heart of Judas was beginning to show. And believe me, it will. Eventually, your true character will come through. Talent may cover character for a while, but not forever. Eventually, your true character will, will show through. That's why it's infinitely more important in our children to develop character than talent and develop character than to praise talent not uh, you know it's it's fine if your boy you know can shoot a basketball through a hoop or he can run the football down the field but I'd applaud him making his bed every day I'd applaud him keeping his room clean I'd applaud him keeping his keeping his appointments when he being on time uh, compliment the character not just the talent okay and uh, that's, the, that's the detriment, and that's, that's where Judas was. Now, I want you to see something about uh, his character. Uh, this, this incident in John 12 is also mentioned. I want you to get Matthew 26. And I want to read, I want to read let's read together what Matthew, Matthew's account of this woman anointing Jesus' feet and Judas's response to it, okay? Because it's interesting that in Matthew and then again in Mark, what happens immediately after this, that really Judas said this and Jesus rebukes him, okay? Let's look at what it says. Look at Matthew 26, verse number 6. Now when Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. But when the disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. And when Jesus understood it, he said to them, Why trouble ye the woman? For she hath wrought a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always. For in that she hath poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. And verily I say unto you that whithersoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this, that this woman hath done be told for memorial of her. Okay? Now, so he rebukes, but now look, what's the next verse say? Verse 14. Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priest and said unto them, What will ye give me that I will deliver him unto you? And I will deliver him unto you. And they covenanted with him for thirty pieces of silver. And from that time he sought opportunity to betray him. We found out, man, you know, it could have been sold for 300 pence. Why? That would have went in my bag. And when he found out he's not going to get any money out of this gig, and Jesus possibly embarrassed him in front of the other 12, well, now I'm going to get back at him. And he goes immediately to the chief priest. Now look at Mark. Mark chapter 14. Just go right after Matthew to Mark chapter 14. Mark the Spirit of God has us give Mark's account of this same, same incident of John chapter 12. Mark 14, and begin at verse number 3. Mark 14, verse 3. And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious. And she brake the box and poured it on his head. And there were some that had indignation within themselves and said, Why was this waste of the ointment made? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and had been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. And Jesus said, Let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She hath wrought a good work on me. For ye have the poor with you always. 
And whensoever ye will, ye may do them good, but me ye have not always. She hath done what she could. She has come aforehand to anoint my body to the bearing. And verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken of for memorial of her. And Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went unto the chief priests to betray him unto them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. And he sought how he might conveniently betray him. It's interesting that both of these accounts give the uh, Judas going to the chief priest and wanting to set up the betrayal right after this incident. And, 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 and he knew, again, his heart was to get the money. And, you know, again, the older you get, the more it's so plain to see that people either live for God or they live for money. It's really the, the two things they pursue. I was talking to someone here this morning. I heard it this week. Uh, you know, the, the big Super Bowl football game tonight. You know, the, the suites that they have to watch the game, uh, they go for $1.8 million to watch the game. And you know what? Those suites will be filled. People will spend that money. I don't know what a regular seat costs. I'm sure it's thousands and thousands of dollars. But the stadium will be full. And, and it's, uh, it's money. It's always about the money. And, and you know, it's, 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 it's just, it almost makes you sick anymore to think about the, the, how they, they're all just worshiping money. As long as somebody has money, everybody thinks they're the greatest thing since sliced bread. And people overlook things that they shouldn't overlook just because somebody has money. And it's, it's sad. You know, again, that's why the Lord reiterated, you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and he'll add these things to you. He'll take care of you. And I'd much rather, you know, uh, God will care for us. And we don't have to be concerned or live for just money. All right? Number four, Judas then betrays Jesus with a kiss. We go to Matthew 26. This is the betrayal in the garden. Matthew chapter 26. Notice with me, beginning in verse number 47. And while he yet spake, that's Jesus, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came, and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he. Hold him first, hold him fast. And forthwith he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master. And he kissed him. And Jesus said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Then, then came they and laid hands on Jesus and took him. All right? So here's the betrayal with a kiss. He, he's betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Really the price of a slave. That's all it was. The price of a slave. But you know what? You think, boy, that's pretty cheap to betray Jesus. But people betray Jesus for a lot less than that in these days. Some betray him for a bottle, betray him for a pill, betray him for pleasure, for, for a season. Uh, just uh, things that may, maybe betray him for a job or for a promotion. Uh, some will betray him for a, for a sporting event. Uh, you know, it's just, it's amazing. Things that people will put ahead of Jesus Christ and, and be willing to put that ahead of the Lord. All of those are foolish prices to pay for your soul. What can a man give in exchange for his soul? You, it's, 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 it, you can't put a price on that. But it's sad to say, well, I would never betray the Lord. But we, 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 we can be guilty of that just in everyday life. We have to be careful. We're not selling Jesus out for cheap, cheaper things. Now, what's really interesting about this whole Judas uh, episode here with the disciples and such, you know, they were with Jesus, not, not quite all three years, but almost all three years of his ministry. And yet none of the disciples suspected Judas, that, that, that something was wrong here, that, that he didn't fit in. 
Now, again, maybe they kind of kept their distance. Maybe nobody was real close to him, but they never suspected him. In fact, none of the apostles believed Judas to be the betrayer. Back up a little bit in Matthew 26. Back up a little bit to verse number 20. Jesus said this, I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung him, they went out in the Mount of Olives. And I'm sorry, I'm, I'm reading the wrong place, aren't I? I need to get verse 20. I started verse 30, didn't I? Or verse 29. Verse 20. Now when the even was come, he sat down with the twelve. And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. And they were exceeding sorrowful, and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? And he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. The Son of Man goeth as it be written of him, but woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? And he said unto him, Thou hast said. There's another place he said, he that dips with me in the dish, and, and, and Judas dipped in the dish with him. It was amazing. And yet the disciples didn't suspect him, even when it was that plain. Now, maybe they weren't listening much to Jesus. Maybe they were so busy talking to each other, trying to figure out who it was. Is it me? Is it me? Is it you? Is it you? And Jesus is talking over here, but they're not listening. They're, 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 they're chatting with each other, trying to figure out uh, who this uh, betrayer is. And they never thought... Uh, it would be Judas. They, they didn't think, even when he left, they thought he just went out to get things that he needed, that they needed. And so they never suspected him. You know, it's, it's interesting. Nobody, when Jesus sent them out two by two to preach, remember they came back and they were all amazed that, you know, the, uh, the, the sick are healed and the devils were cast out. And Jesus said, hey, don't rejoice in that. Rejoice that your names are written in heaven. And, but they didn't come back and say, man, it was wonderful, man, it was great, but Judas, something wrong with that guy. I mean, nothing happened when he preached. They didn't say that. Nobody had any questions. He just fit right in. And, and uh, you know, religious, knew all the right words, could do the right things, but he wasn't saved. He wasn't one of them. And, and you'll see that here in just a minute. Uh, in other words, he fooled the apostles, but he didn't fool the Savior. Jesus knew who would betray him. He knew from the beginning. He knew that he'd be a betrayer. And listen, it, it doesn't matter who you fool. You won't fool God. God knows. God knows if you're saved. You know if you're saved or not. You know if you truly trusted Jesus Christ or if you're just going along playing church because you, you, you like everybody and I, I like the, the, the good life and I like things, but you have to know Jesus Christ and know that you're born again. Now, this goes to number six, all right? Judas was a disciple, but he was not saved. You say, well, how can you say that? Well, let's look at a couple scriptures, okay? Uh, you're in Matthew. Let's stop in Luke 22, all right? Luke 22. Luke 22, verse 1 says, the feast of un Now the feast of unleavened bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. And the chief priests and scribes sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people. Then entered who? Class. Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being the number of the number of the twelve. Who entered into Judas? Satan did. Satan going to enter into a Christian? He cannot. Why? Who lives in the Christian? Jesus Christ does. He's not sharing any room with Satan. That can't happen. Greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. Now again, this is mentioned again in um, Luke 20. No, that was Luke. Uh, John 13. John 13. I think that's what I have now. Hard to read my writing sometime. Yes. John 13. This goes back to what we said earlier. Um, verse number, let's pick it up here. Verse 24, Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him that he should ask who it should be of whom he spake. He then lying on Jesus' breast said unto him, Lord, who is it? 
And Jesus answered, He it is to whom I give a sop when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. And after the sop, what happened? Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus unto him, That thou doest, do quickly. And no man, now no man at the table knew for what intent he spake this unto him. For some of them thought, because Judas had the bag, that Jesus had said unto him, Buy those things that we have need of against the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. He then, having received the sop, went immediately out, and it was night. That, that kind of blows my mind a little bit. The disciples still couldn't understand it. And I wonder sometimes if Jesus did that and realized the disciples still didn't get it, thought, and I'm leaving this whole thing in their hands. I mean, what, 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 am, what am I doing? Or talk about feeling like uh, three years I've taught these guys and they still aren't getting it. I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, but they didn't, they didn't get it. And, and yet on their behalf, I guess, I, I like the fact they're, they're trying to believe the best about everybody and not the worst about everybody. And I guess that's not a bad, bad way to go either. But here he was, a disciple, but not saved. And let me say this, it becomes increasingly difficult for him to admit his lost condition. He may, at some point along the way, understood that never a man spake like this man. That, to, like Peter, when Peter said, whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And, and Judas says, yeah, he does. I never, I've never seen like this. They were amazed at some of the miracles they saw Jesus do. Remember when he stilled the storm on the Sea of Galilee? They were all amazed. They were astonished. They, they, they couldn't believe it. He was part of that. But the longer he waited, the more difficult it got to be saved, the more difficult it got to come to Christ. And that's why the Bible always says, now is the accepted time. Behold, today is the day of salvation. Uh, don't, don't put off salvation. Don't wait. Say, oh, what do people think? Man, I wouldn't worry about what people think. I'd be concerned about what God knows. And listen, don't boast yourself of tomorrow. None of us know what a day can bring forth. Uh, I, just, I just saw the, the, across the little that thing at the bottom of the television screen, uh, this morning, a helicopter crash uh, somewhere in Nevada. Uh, six people dead going to the Super Bowl. They never made it. Did they plan on dying yesterday? No. But they met God yesterday. They went into eternity yesterday. You, you don't know. You don't know. And you and I don't know. And... Uh, it's uh, uh, now is the time. The longer you put it off, the harder it will become. And, and, and that's why the time to admit you're not saved, even though you're a church member, even though you might have some position in church, is immediately. Immediately. I'd make certain of my salvation. The longer you wait, the more difficult it will become. All right? Now, something else to remember about Judas. He had remorse but not repentance. Matthew 27. Matthew 27 gives the sad ending of Judas. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders, verse 1, Matthew 27, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Judas to put him to death. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, that's Jesus, repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I've sinned and I've betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? See thou to that. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. And then, of course, the chief priest took and bought a potter's field and buried strangers in it. But you understand, Judas was remorseful, but he wasn't repentant. He, he told the chief priest he'd sinned, but he never told God he'd sinned. He never cried out to God for repentance. He realized he betrayed innocent blood. And can I say this? Sin will always bring remorse. But sorrow isn't repentance. Sorrow can work towards repentance, Corinthians tells us. But just being sorrowful isn't repentance. Sometimes, and everyone with children understands how this is. You know, when, when you uh, confront a child or you catch a child in doing wrong, 
Are they sorry that you caught them doing wrong? Or are they sorry for what they did wrong? There's a difference. And they could just be remorseful because they got caught. Or they can be sorrowful because of what they've done. And you discerned the repentance. He didn't, he didn't like the way he felt. He didn't like the way it was. And he tried to give back the money. But he never cried out to God for forgiveness. And the devil comes to kill steal and destroy and he destroyed him he committed suicide he took his own life both mentioned here and again in Acts chapter 1 I'm reminded the, ple- the Bible says that there's the pleasures of sin for a season Proverbs 10 I think in verse number 22 says the blessing of God it maketh rich and he adds no sorrow to it It doesn't say that the devil won't have blessings. But there's always an accompanying sorrow that comes with them. No, you can have it for a while and it can be great for a while. But my friend, there'll always be a sorrow that'll follow. There'll always be remorse after it. The Proverbs says in other place, your mouth will be filled with gravel. I mean, it was not any fun at all. But the blessing of the Lord... It makes rich and he adds no sorrow to it. There's never any sorrow that accompanies God's blessings. So there's there's much to learn from the life of Judas Iscariot. And uh, thankful for what the Lord has given to us in the scriptures about his life. All right. Let's have prayer together, shall we? Father, thank you for this morning now. Thank you for our time to look briefly at the life of Judas. One you chose to be one of the twelve. One you knew who would be one that would betray you. Father, I pray, first of all, that no one listening to my voice, whether here or by way of the live stream, would be trying to fool others by thinking they're saved when they're not really saved. Pretending to be born again when they're not really born again. Lord, I pray that today would be the day they would say, God, I cry out to you. Save my soul. Change my life. And I pray you'd hear their prayer and their cry. Lord, help those of us who are saved to learn from the lessons from Judas. Help us to be faithful followers of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Bless our service to follow now this morning, Lord. Meet with us is our prayer. And I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we have right about 10.15, so we have 15 minutes, and we'll start the morning service. You're dismissed till then. We'll start at 10.30.
last my traveling days are done in a land somewhere beyond the sun in the arms of sweet deliverance in the arms of sweet deliverance in the arms of sweet deliverance gonna lay my heavy burdens down and with my lord i'll abide when at last my traveling days are done in a land somewhere beyond the sun in the arms of sweet deliverance in the arms of sweet deliverance i shall rest by and by up my treasures in that home above, trusting fully, trusting in my Savior's love, doing what I can for heaven's holy dove. I'm getting ready to leave this world, well, I'm getting ready to leave this world of sorrow. I'm getting ready for the gates of pearl tomorrow, keeping my record, watching both day and night. I'm getting ready to leave this of his saving grace in surely trial i his love can trace sure that up in heaven i shall find a place i'm getting ready to leave this world to prepare a mansion jesus said i'll go if it were not true i would have told you so just a little while to linger here below i'm getting ready to leave this world well i'm getting ready to leave this world of sorrow i'm getting ready for the gate of pearl tomorrow keeping my record up watching both day and night i'm getting ready to leave this world keeping my record up watching both day and night i'm getting ready see Jesus Christ meet him in the air stepping on the clouds he will greet us all the joy together we'll share I'm gonna leave this world behind me going where the devil cannot find me I'm going higher, higher, higher. stepping on the clouds one of these days I'm gonna leave one of these days I'm going home I'm going home I'm gonna take Stepping on the clouds, we'll see Jesus Christ meet him in the air. Step 
Now I look back over the mountains and the valleys. 